everybody, Johnny Hawthorne here at the Exotic booth, NAM 2020 with Dean Brown, one of our exotic users, both guitar and pedals. Thanks That's for right. coming out, buddy. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. And uh, tell us about your exotic, this is your new XTC guitar that you got recently. Well, this guitar aesthetically was patterned after a, a picture that uh, I had showed Andy of an old guitar that I had. Uh, Andy's our luthier. Right. Uh, it, it was an old, uh, well, actually, it was a brand new Tele that I had from, uh, from like back in the early 70s. And uh, that guitar got stolen, blah, blah, blah. There was a whole thing. Anyway, there's only one existing picture of it was this picture of me right after I bought it in Hong Kong, right. sitting on a, a, a hotel bed or something, right? And so he, uh, he aesthetically, he managed to nail it, you know what I mean, with the, with this finish. I mean, this is a sort of a, a vintage white finish, not, you know, that's uh, different than that sort of cream, yeah. you know, type, type of finish with a tally of. Uh, Did it have a humbucker or a single coil? It, it was a single coil. Okay. But, but, so we, you know, we decided to update it and, uh, and we went with a humbucker for a number of reasons. One, you know, not the least of which is they're not as noisy. But uh, right. but the other reason was I wanted something um, that was a little bit fatter for, for like playing sort of jazz stuff and stuff like that. So the guitar could be a little bit more of a chameleon. Yeah. And you know I you know I've got the XSC right. Right, your black and that, strat. And that black strat is with a maple neck. Right. But that again was uh, the roasted maple neck, so I had to have that. Okay. That's a, I think that's underestimated as to how great they affect the, the not just the sound of the guitar, but the playability and the feel. They're, the roasted maple neck is a real game changer. Right. And, uh, right. So this guitar has chambers. Yes. Um, it's an so alder, it's a, body. alder body. It's an alder body, and I chose again partially uh, to be uh, you know to be honest. I chose the the. Uh, uh, the rosewood, because that guitar was rosewood. But also, I felt like the maple on a telly for me might be too bright. Gotcha. You know. So and there what it about is. The frets. Are and they the tall and narrow? They are the tall and narrow. And okay. I, and I, you know, again to be honest, I didn't think I would like that. But I, you know, you guys talked me into it. Right. And I swear by it now great it's, you know it's uh, they speak great you know and it's so easy to play you don't have to with a tall narrow fret you don't really have to dig in you can just it's it's you know even though the, the action isn't particularly low this guitar is set up unbelievable you know it's uh, it's uh, it's just it's perfect in every way let's talk about exotic effects what do you got on your board nowadays well you turned me on to the uh, volume control pedal, so that's the latest. Well, at the same time, simultaneously, I got the volume control pedal and uh, and the uh, su super sweet. Super sweet. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, um, the volume control pedal is the gold one, which is high impedance. And I remember you telling me, it's like, listen, try it, and if you don't like it, you, you know, you don't have to use it, but, you, you know... Uh, we never force anybody. Well, why would you, you know what I mean? And you don't need to, you know, but but the thing I like about that pedal, the thing I love about it, first place, it's very smooth, it's a slightly smaller footprint, which is great for today's pedal boards and traveling and right. stuff, right? But the other aspect of that pedal, which is obviously the most important, is that it's really linear. It, it just... Uh, like from the moment you touch it, you can hear that it's that the volume's getting louder, all the way to the end. So and smooth that, and steady. It's smooth and steady, and that's that's exactly what you want from a volume pedal. And it, as we talked about in an earlier uh, uh, video, uh, yeah. video we did, the volume pedal is integral to my style, to what I do, because I'll I set up my my basic sound palette goes before it, gotcha. you know, right. and so, so that enables me to kind of, within a certain reason, have the tone I want 
but at a level that doesn't make everybody pissed off at me. You know right, what I mean? Right. And so, so you get your tone, but at a, a I volume can still that you tuck can it control. into the mix. Right. You know, and that, you know, for live, you know, it's great. But the other thing about a volume pedal, and, and we talked about this, but I'll say it again, is that it's very expressive. So you right. don't have to use it like, like just to turn it up and leave it. It can be sort of like how I'm talking to you. It's like some words are louder and some yeah. are soft, you know. So you can do that when, you, and it, for me, I'm just not that guy. I'm not right. the, the, the sort of Roy Buchanan, uh, you know, well, you Danny know. Gatton yeah. kind of guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, those guys, are, it's unbelievable what they do with a telly, you know, and, I, and, I, and I, I use that idea a little bit but it's only to get the gain structure that I'm looking for, but I still need that other volume pedal to be able to tuck it into the mix right. 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 So even with that, I still need the volume pedal. Right, right. You know? So there's the volume pedal, and like I said, and then the super sweet is just, you know, it just makes makes everything a little bigger and a little warmer, you know? So I, I, uh, uh, I, I turn it on if I have to play a, a solo, or if I'm right. playing like a solo guitar thing or something right. where I can, <clears throat> where I'm playing softer, but I want it. Right. You know what I mean? You I want it, it to out. get pushed out a little bit more. And you use the BB Plus as your overdrive. I've been. That's been my go-to overdrive for years now. Right. And uh, and the Robotalk. Robotalk two, you know. and the uh, the XW1 Wah. That's right. And that Wah is. Uh, you know, I was just, uh, what was his name? I'm sorry, I, I forgot his name. The, the guy I was just- From AMS? Yes, yes, from AMS. So uh, I was just telling him that the Wawa pedal, it has a lot of knobs on it. Right. And they all work. Right. And so it's, and but more importantly than that, it's not hard to dial in a sound because I, I get frustrated really quickly. You know what I mean? I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna sit there and just, you know, move it like like microscopic increments to try to it's like I want it to, to do something right away you know and so this pedal it's very easy to dial it into your sound palette and your style you right. know so and uh, tell me about some of the projects that you're doing now um, <coughs> what are your touring plans for uh, the winter and spring yeah um, uh, nothing much in the winter I'm gonna stay home and teach, uh, yeah. you know, uh, teach at MI, as you know, and I do a lot of uh, Skype stuff, more and more, really. But, uh, you know, and then, of course, I'm a, I always, always do the occasional baked potato gig, and if you haven't been to one, which you haven't, haven't been to. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but, I'm busy touring but myself. Should, but, you, okay, that's that's always uh, the only excuse that, okay. that's... Uh, that's the one I'm going yeah, with. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, uh, but... If you ever get a chance, you should really hear that band because right. that, we've been playing a long time and it's a, a well-oiled unit, you know, and it sounds great in that room. That's a, one of the best sounding rooms in the world, really. Right. So anyway, there's that, but uh, uh, I'm working on a, a, a spring tour in Europe and a, a, a summer tour in Europe with uh, Dennis Chambers and Excellent. Adrian Faro and, uh, and uh, Eric Marienthal. Wow. Um, but I've got a big project coming up in uh, April, <clears throat> April 3rd, at the Berks Jazz Festival. It's a thing called, uh, it's called the uh, Summer of Love Evolution. And what I'm doing is I'm taking music from the late 60s, early 70s, taking a slight liberty there, yeah. and, uh, and um, sort of trying to draw the correlation between that music and how it affected jazz. Right. You know? And so uh, I've got some of the greatest players in the world to, to wow. help me out with that. Randy Brecker, Eric Marienthal, uh, Keith Carlock, the drummer who plays with Steely Dan now, right, but right. used to play with Sting. And right. of course, he's played with every jazz artist. You know, That's in April? That's April 3rd. Yeah, okay. uh, Mino Sinilu from Miles Davis's band, you know, from, from back then. Uh, great, great, phenomenal percussionist, multi-instrumentalist. Uh, un unbelievable singer named Honey La Rochelle. So in other words, uh, <clears throat> another singer named Devron Patterson. 
because uh, you know I'm, I'm not trying to make this sort of like you know Dean Brown does jazz versions of the uh, I'm, they're vocal you know there's vocals it's going to be those songs and they're going to be recognizable but they're going to have this extra element extra you know? twist yeah yeah well that's you know? excellent yeah so finally um, what we've been asking all of our um, um, exotic artists is when I say um, what does exotic tone or uh, what does exotic mean to you what would be your response the, the simple the simple answer for me is quality it's uh, the, these instruments are so consistent and when I say quality I don't mean just quality of the building of the instrument but the quality of the tone they have a beautiful tone quality so if it's like one word it's got to be quality all right you know well, that's good Dean thanks so much for yeah. uh, helping us out and if people want more information where do they go DeanBrown.com, of course, and uh, um, I just did a series, by the way, I forgot to mention on sure. my music masterclass on improvising, so you can check me out there if you want, and, uh, you know, I teach <clears throat> I teach at MI, uh, Musicians Institute, Musicians Institute, but DeanBrown.com, and of course, Facebook, and Twitter, and all that other stuff, you can all insert, right. so, so. Everybody, uh, Dean Brown, and... Uh, Take care. We'll talk to you guys later. Yeah.